Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where over the next four weeks, we're going to be taking a look at four of the Daniel Craig, James Bond movies. The current four that are out. That's right. There is, of course, a new one. And maybe we'll sneak some uh, James Bond video games in at the end. But don't worry, if you don't like them, just skip it. We don't care. And maybe we'll put in some snippets from the movie No Time to Die. We'll just... Mm -hmm. we'll just Rip it off the internet and just put just put them in there. Just yep. a, just illegal clips of it. <laughs> just just reach a bunch of copyright laws. We want MGM to come at us because yeah. we know that your company will fall apart again, <laughs> and we will. Oh no, Amazon own them now. <laughs> what are you going to do? Sick that lion on us? That lion's got to be a hundred years old at this point. I'll fight that lion. I'll do it. <laughs> you cowards. Uh, leave a like if you could. I, I just want to give a little bit of a, a background to this movie, if if you don't mind, please. So Bond was very much on the way out after Die Another Day. Mm -hmm. We have looked at the Brosnan series, if people do want to check those out. That movie came out at a similar time to the Jason Bourne franchise, and everybody went, Could just do that. Yeah. And Bond went, that's what we do. Yeah. We take a popular thing, and then we do it slightly later than that thing. And sometimes it works a treat. Yep. And sometimes people go, huh. That's just the Dark Knight, isn't it? <laughs> but that's not that's not this week. It's a story for another day. That's right. So interestingly enough, Pierce Brosnan, he was initially asked back oh. for this movie. Although Die Another Day wasn't a good movie, it did break a lot of records, uh -huh. box office-wise. Worst movie. <laughs> that's right. Number one worst movie of all time. <laughs> Big bad movie. And so they thought, listen, we need to kind of raise the bar in terms mm. of spy movies. It's not about gadgets and a man... Just a very drunk man in his early 50s stumbling about a set. Do you know what I mean? That's right. I like Pierce Brosnan. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Do you like him when he's got his Colonel Sanders beard? Have you I'm seen a, that? I'm a big fan. Yeah, wow. Well. They also would have to have paid him $30 million. They went, we, no, this is clearly, it's time to go in another direction. And this movie, despite coming out four years after Die Another Day, it's like there's a million years between these two movies. For sure, yeah. Yeah, how, how much about this do you enjoy? All of it. Yeah. It's my favourite James Bond film. Uh, same, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen some or any of the Dalton movies. I've seen every James Bond movie multiple times, mm -hmm. and yet this one, my favourite. Except, of course, for the 1960s Casino Royale. <laughs> yes. David Niven. Who else is in that? Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers is in that. Other people people we won't name. Other comedians of the day that are dead and forgotten. Mm. And Asula Andrus is in it from Dr. No. She's, oh, really? She's in there as well, yeah. As that character? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, though, this it nails so much. It nails, you know, the recast of James Bond. Mm -hmm. It nails the theme song. I think it's my favourite theme song. I think you disagree with me on that. That's correct. Uh, Mine's obviously the 1960s version of Casino Royale. <laughs> with seven James Bonds at Casino Royale went to save the girl and win the... Wait, went to, went to save the world and win the girl like Casino Royale. Da, 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 da. It doesn't matter. That's how the actual song goes as well. They're just like, do you want another take? Nah, we'll just... <laughs> just keep it going. <laughs> yeah. So I think it nails bringing back Judy Dench. It mm -hmm. doesn't work in terms of like the continuity of the series. This is a reboot. The other yeah. James Bonds, the ones that are, you know, technically owned by the same company... It's the same guy. So, I mean, sort of. Well, I mean, it is the same director as Goldeneye. It's mm. Martin Campbell. They brought him back to reboot it in the Brosnan era, and then they brought him back back. Such a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I think the villain is terrific, if a little abrupt in mm. the way that he's dispensed of. He's got a bleeding eye and an asthma puffer. What more do you need? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he's things. that nerd you bullied in high school. He's back. <laughs> and he's got a rope. He's got a rope for your nuts. Look out. I also think it is. Uh, it does the best version of parkour we've ever seen in a movie, with maybe the exception of Punisher Warzone, yeah. which is more done for, for a gag. So the cold open of this, it's, uh, it's James Bond getting his double O license. And the idea is that he has to kill two people yes. to get that. One, he brutally murders in a bathroom. And the second one, he casually shoots at the desk. And the guy's like, you know, it's quite, it's quite difficult to kill a man. This dude has killed so many people prior to this moment, like with his bare hands. Almost certainly, right? Do you think so? He's a just fucking lunatic! Just off the books. Yes! Because to get a double O status, you have to be assigned to kill two people, right? It's, yeah. You can't just be like... Oh, no, it's not just anybody. You can't do it on your off hours. <laughs> I, what I like about the scene where he kills the section chief, Dryden, mm. is when 
Dryden's already dead body is flung over his his desk. Yeah. You can see the little picture of his wife and kids yep. on yep. the desk, and I'm like, boy, this James Bond doesn't care about nothing. Yeah, and he looks at the camera and he goes, that's right, Nick Mason, I don't. <gasps> <laughs> you got my letters! <laughs> he would have snuck in the office, taken Dryden's gun out of his drawer, and yep. seen that picture and been like... I don't Whatever. care. Yeah. So the thing is as well, what I like about this version of Bond, and he's not everybody's favourite, but I think he might be mine. Bond has always been the worst. Yeah. And I mean like he's using Queen and Country as a thinly veiled excuse just to murder people. Mm -hmm. I think like Roger Moore is probably the exception because he's like the nicest, I, I guess. Yeah, but from time to time. From sure. time to time, yeah. But Daniel Craig, this version is just so transparently awful, which is what I think James Bond is. Like, at his core, he's he's awful. And this guy is just James Bond with no finesse. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what I like about it. But you probably know about the controversy surrounding the casting of this of this particular actor. Uh, more like James Blonde. Whoa! Yeah, but the, the, you got my letters! <laughs> the British press were not... Happy with the well, casting they're not, of Daniel they're not Craig. known for their uh, no, stability. No, they're all getting anything right ultimately. <laughs> but yeah, I remember. I, I remember there was some the, some footage of uh, Daniel Craig as Bond, and he was he was on a boat, and they were gonna, mm. I think, drive him up the Thames. The, the big reveal, and and you know, present him to the press. But of course, mm. for safety purposes, he had to wear a, a little life jacket yeah. over his uh, over his suit. Which I remember, like this man's a coward. <laughs> he should have to drown for a movie. <laughs> If that boat capsizes, he should drown. <laughs> it was all of those things. And he's the shortest James Bond. I think he's oh, like 5'10", right. which you can't tell. Also, he'd kill every other James Bond. I remember I had a UK friend tell me he didn't like him because he looks like a Polish plumber. You know, because he's not like, I guess, traditionally handsome. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he's better looking than 99% of people on the planet. Uh -huh. But but yeah, people didn't like him. But I think very quickly, you know, when the first footage came out of, of this... And just the way he looks, the shape that he got into. Yeah. It's like, calm down. This is gonna this is actually gonna be okay. When they did the uh, when they did the uh, as per mentioned, Ursula Andrus uh, emerging from the from the from the ocean at the beach. Yeah. When his little speedos, I think people were like, Oh yeah. Like James um Boner <laughs> for James Bond. For James they Bond. said the British <laughs> press said. That's right. <laughs> oh my god, he's got a boner. You know what's interesting about this movie? This Bond, he smiles more. Like, he smiles an astounding amount in this movie yeah. and then never again for the rest of the series. <laughs> like, when you when you rewatch this, you realise that this particular storyline just broke whatever humanity he had left. Yeah, that's true. Because he's always, like, he's being, he's smiling, he's being friendly to, you know, yeah. uh, to hotel staff. He's also he has not, a little laugh with people yeah. sometimes. He's not too grabby. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, he's a little bit grabby, mm -hmm. but not in the traditional James Bond sense. That's right. You know? I mean, again, he is awful, but... Yeah, you know, you're right. It kind of does a good job of just wringing out the last sense of happiness in this man. I guess until, you know, we get to we get to Spectre, I guess. But it, I don't think it sells it as well as this does. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the the action in this? I mean, it's what's fascinating to me about it. I, I Sorry, I've stepped on your question that I asked. But here we go. Here's what I think. <laughs> hey, what do you think about this thing? Here's what I think. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, who copy the Bourne formula of fighting. Mm -hmm. you know, they, the they, Bournula. The Bournula. They cross the line. So, you, you know, in terms of the camera operation. So you, you lose track of who's who. Yeah. This doesn't do that. There's like, for example, a moment in a stairwell where uh -huh. they're just tumbling and fighting and you, you follow the action the entire time. It's great stuff. How do you feel about the action in this? you got two seconds. It's good. <laughs> it's good, I reckon. <laughs> well, is there any like particular moment that stood out, like the parkour chase, Yeah, I mean, the example? parkour chase through the construction. With that famous parkour guy. Yeah, that sequence is great. There, there are many great moments in it, and I think I, I'm not alone in thinking one of them is the moment where the, uh, the, the bomb maker goes to shoot Bond, realises he's out of bullets, throws the gun, and then Bond catches it like it is literally nothing. Oh, my just, favourite. He looks just like an exhausted man in an office <laughs> who's been asked to repair the photocopier for like the third time this week, and he's just like, That's Ugh. not even my job. And then he just pitches it right into the guy's head. It's so funny. It's uh, really funny. And there's also a moment in in that where uh, the parkour guy leaps a barrier and then Bond just runs through it like an angry gorilla. I think that's. He that's doesn't terrific. even know what's on the other side. Just goes through. Just goes. This is probably drywall. Or a, it isn't. Could have been a pool full of sharks. He'll fight him. He doesn't care. Uh, I also, uh, also, I love the part uh, when they go to the Nambutu embassy. Yeah. And, oh, he, yeah. and he just wrecks that diplomat. <laughs> this pencil pusher just pulls a gun on him and he just he just wrecks him. In like three ways in one second. 
It's so funny. <laughs> it is funny. He just like everybody's just just doing their job. Yeah. He just he just tears through like an escaped gorilla from the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> just throwing people about. I think another thing this movie does well is the inclusion of Vespa with these characters uh, of the Bond women. They'll bring them in and they just often and not always. There are exceptions. They don't do much, or yeah. they're, they're and they're written weirdly and poorly. And they're just kind of there to kind of betray Bond, which, you know, <laughs> does end up happening here or not. Yeah. And But this, there's a lot of, like, nuance here and there's, there's, a, and there's a lot of chemistry. There's a lot of chemistry. There's a lot of kind of more naturalistic dialogue where, yeah. like, you know, there's a moment where uh, Bond and Vesper meet on the train and he just point blank stares her down and says, you don't think this is a very good plan, do you? And she's like, <laughs> no. Why would it be? It seems like a, a, a stupid plan. That would be in a spy novel in the 50s, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a stupid plan made by a stupid man. Just a plan for idiots. Well, let's talk about the plan because he wants to uh, basically bankrupt Le Chief. He doesn't want to. He wants to murder everyone in the world. Sorry, but they yeah. won't let him do that. <laughs> so, so The next best thing. The next best thing is they, yeah. the MI6 want to bankrupt Le Chief so that he will sort of run into the, hand, the, the, the waiting arms of MI6 yep. and they can get all the information on his sort of terrorist... Our clients. Which is Spectre. Not yet Not because yet. of uh, legal <laughs> restrictions. Yeah, currently it is unknown yeah. terrorist organisation. Exactly, TBD. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's fun. I just think it's also really bold to just go, fuck it, you're watching 40 minutes of poker. And to be fair, it's broken up with like fist fights and a heart attack, etc. Yeah. and so forth. But, you know, they put in a card game and it absolutely works. And I think like, Solo, for example, I think it kind of dabbled with this idea but didn't quite commit to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, look, if I have one criticism of the uh, the movie Casino Royale... Is it that it's not Bacharach like the original book no, maybe I, was? No, I mean that's... Was it Bacharach? Yeah, it was. Okay. I'm going to let the commenters uh, critique your pronunciation of that. Is it pronounced Barack Obama? Yes. <laughs> okay. But I think it's just... They used Texas Hold'em Poker at the time because that was super hot sure. uh, at that moment. But I just feel like... Oh, is man. it the guy standing there at the it's, back going, so who's got this card? Yeah, but, uh, that's exactly what it is, what if, yeah. If he has this And also everybody, and this is every James Bond movie, everybody always has the best cards Yeah, in every hand, which yeah. is just very unlikely. Yeah, I mean, I could win with those cards mm. if I just had the best cards. Yeah, but you wouldn't. So I would just go be like, I'm panicking. <laughs> also, what's James Bond's tell? Does he just not have a tell? I guess his tell is... He's not murdering anybody currently at the table. Yeah. Also, once you give him a heart attack, all these, like, <laughs> visible ticks would just be all over the place. That's you know true, what I mean? Yeah. You don't know what's real and what's not. And that's something I actually wanted to talk about. Uh, he's a fragile man, despite being enormous. You see him at moments, like, tend to his wounds. As mentioned, he has that heart attack. Often, you know, torture and extreme, like, physical conditions are shrugged off. By a James Bond-esque character. Uh -huh. Like James Bond, for example, in previous James Bond movies. Sure. But this this torture sequence, my God. My God. It's all you need, man. You don't need a laser. <laughs> no, you really don't. Mm. You don't need a... You need the people's laser. <laughs> a, rope. a rope. With a, a knotted rope. <laughs> a... Uh, look, miscellaneous notes. Uh, the absolute himbo that is Carter. You know, the guy um, hand yeah, his puts ear. his hand up to his ear. That Just that, just a beautiful early 2000s man just working his way through MI6 somehow. I hope he's doing all right, that guy. Do you reckon that snake got him? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Actually, there is something I wanted to ask you about. Is this the best dressed Daniel Craig James Bond? Oh, good question. Because I know you have opinions about his tiny little suits, which we might save. I think it is personally mm. just because the point of the literary Bond yeah. is that he is not so much expensively dressed as he is inconspicuously dressed. Like, of, he, like of the era. Yeah, but yeah. also that he looks the way he does to blend in to an yeah. environment. Like he wears a suit or a tuxedo when he needs to mm. and he wears casual clothes when he needs to. Yeah. Right? Like the reason Bond in the books wears a suit is because he's supposed to be a businessman in the in the 50s and 60s and that's how they dressed. But I think that, that evolved into like Bond's always the most, he's always the most fabulously dressed man in the room and it's like... Does he have a good watch? No, he's got the best watch yeah, actually. Uh -huh. uh, but I mean, uh, Lindy Hemming, who is the costume designer of this movie and I think every Bond movie from... GoldenEye to this movie. Okay. She also did the costumes for the Nolan Batman movies, oh, right. among okay. other things. Uh, I think she does a great job in this movie mm. as, like, setting that out. Yeah. All right, Mason, do you know what it's time for, though, isn't it? It's, it's a license to trivia. Oh. Uh, 007. 
or something. Uh, Daniel Craig quit smoking to get into shape. Originally, is he though, back on him now? Back on the gas? Don't think so, because originally James Bond smoked sixty cigarettes a day. This is interesting. The bulk and which is a lot, except when you consider that he's not real and he can really smoke as many as he wants. And it also was like the fifties, so you know, Bond smoked five hundred cigarettes a day. Yep, and he lived for a million years. <laughs> Uh, it was but a, a giant! <laughs> and the British press are like, Daniel Craig isn't smoking 500 cigarettes a day and he's a giant and he lived for a million years. <laughs> More like James Blonde. <laughs> so uh, it's a Balkan mixture, his cigarettes. This is obviously from the books. Oh, yes. With a higher nicotine content than the cheaper varieties. Also, his average daily consumption of alcohol is in the region of half a bottle of spirits. Producers Barbara Broccoli and yes. Michael G. Wilson didn't secure the rights to Casino Royale until 2000 when Sony exchanged them. All for, can I, can I spoil sure. this one? Spider-Man. That's right, yeah. Spider-Man. Who do you think got the better deal there? Definitely Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. I mean, it's Bond. It's yeah. huge. Uh, you can't really lose, yeah, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because what are they going to do with one Bond movie? That's true, yeah. One, you know, make another <laughs> rip-off Casino Royale movie? Yes. Steve Carell. Put Steve Carell Why in. not? Steve Carell and bloody Seth Rogen. It's fine. Whatever that is. One who was hot in that era. So whoever's Those in guys. old school. Yes. Only other actor, apparently, who was in serious contention, though a bunch of names came up, uh, including Hugh Jackman, who has since come out and said that he passed. I don't know whether he was officially offered, but he uh-huh. saw what they were doing with like the previous ones, and he's like, no, thank you, Van Helsing uh-huh. is for me. Go fuck yourself. Um, it was Henry Cavill. But he was considered too young because he was only 22 at the time. So I feel like that would be more age appropriate because Eva Green at the time would have been 25. Yeah, makes more sense. It also broke a record for the most car barrel rolls in a film (laughs) assisted by an air cannon. Uh, You're probably familiar with this though. When British Airways showed this movie on their airline, they blurred out the tail that showed Virgin Atlantic, the logo. So as not to offend virgins. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were very upset at the time (laughs) in theatres. And they also cut the Richard Branson cameo which you probably Oh, remember. yeah, because he gets frisked at the airport, sure. He does, yeah. So Casino Royale, you probably know this, it was called that in France, but in the US it's known as Casino Quarter with Pounder with Yeah, we go. Yeah, I, knew, I knew where you were going. I've done it! You did it. <laughs> Terrific stuff. Uh, here's a real one. Sir Roger Moore was... Repo- well, now I'm doubting any of these, <laughs> honestly. Sir Roger Moore was reportedly so impressed with this movie that he went out and bought a DVD of it. Like a bootleg? <laughs> They're all on VCDs? Yep, he went to the Camden markets. He got himself a <laughs> copy of Casino Royale. Oh, that's Just it. one that was filmed in the theatres. <laughs> you going to see this in the theatres, Roger? No. Nope. No, definitely no. not. Uh, this one I enjoy because I think it speaks to James Bond as a character. So during the showdown of the final hand of the poker game, James Bond does not reveal his cards until all the other players have shown their hands, even though he knows that he holds the best possible hand in this situation. Mm -hmm. So he intentionally waited to rub it in, and this has got an official title in poker called the slow roll, and whilst it's not against the rules, it's considered very bad etiquette and would be critiqued harshly in a real-world game because he's a dog, because he's a bad guy. But I mean, the alternative is... He kills you all. <laughs> so, you know, which one are you going to take? What do you do? Right. And uh, you probably know this because Pierce Brosnan uh, revealed it in a, uh, in a Q&A Go in on. 2020. He actually met with Quentin Tarantino about doing a Casino Royale movie set in the 60s, a period piece Bond film. And when, when was he approached? This was after Die Another Day, oh. or it might have been around that era when, oh. when he was still involved in the in the franchise. Yeah, right. So uh, they he said like that a bunch of drinks together, and then nothing ever came of it. So mm. there you go. You here's, a, here's a couple more. Here's a fun, couple of fun fun facts. Let's do it. I've I've got a renewed love for Sony Ericsson products, so that's oh, always wow. good. I love love searching on my Sony Vio. Oh yeah, yeah. Using my. You're going to be searching that landfill for that, <laughs> that Sony Vio. <laughs> you better believe I am. <laughs> It's right near the Ocean Club. Uh, and I think the, the guy who spoke, we'll, we'll get comments, so I feel I should mention it. Sure. Uh, the guy with the gold Range Rover that, uh, that Bond backs into uh, a, a parking spot and, and crashes. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's supposed to be Auric Goldfinger. Oh. Uh, or, or at least a reference to him. Well, I'm going to edit this out so we get the comments. Oh, my God, James. <laughs> also, original car. We see it. We see his original car, don't we? I have thoughts about that. How many 1964 Silver Aston Mons are in this universe? At least two? Maybe. We'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll have to talk about it. If we're talking about Casino Rail, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. need to obviously get into one of the key aspects of the Daniel Craig Bond series. He's famous for it. What's he famous for? He's famous for two things. Little briefs. Three things. <laughs> but in addition to that, going rogue. Yep. And then retiring from the spy game altogether. <laughs> it's true. 
I mean, but but is it every is it every movie? We're gonna have to find out, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Does he go rogue in this movie? Hell yeah! Almost immediately after becoming a double O, <laughs> he's like, "What are they gonna do? I'll kill him." Yeah. And then then he does a little bit of you know he does a little bit of work for them. Obviously, mm-hmm. collects a paycheck. That's right. He probably waited till Thursday when it's cleared. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly and then he's right, like, um, yeah. I tend to my resignation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but how does he go rogue in this one? He, they're like, what, they're like, they're like uh, you're not getting any more money, James Bond. They're like, go on vacation. And he's like, definitely go on vacation. I'm going to go on vacation. So I'm going to go on so many vacations. There's going to be so many explosions. <laughs> then it's kind of a working vacation, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, just, he's just doing what he wants. Mm. And that's what I love about this character. Yeah, yeah. His complete disregard for really anything or anyone. Except killing people, he loves it. Yeah, he's got a lot of regard for that. Mm. Yeah, but then of course, he does retire. Yes, he uh, he he uh, falls in love with uh, with Vesper Lind. Yep, and he's like, I'll put in a good four or five days in the job. Mm-hmm. I'm probably due for long service leave. I I'll, think so. Uh, I'll, I'll take that. They'll, they can pay me out, and I'll uh, I'll I'm done. Oh my goodness, we're being pulled into the Matrix again. No, that was last week. Uh, we're being pulled into the world of espionage. Oh no. And spies versus spies. Who's going to lurk? Who's, what, what evil forces are going to lurk around every corner? Oh, it's an Aston Martin. <laughs> it's coming to mug me. Oh no. Like, is that still a relevant car? I it's guess. always driving an Aston Martin. Yeah, no, I mean, just mean in the world. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Because this week you might be like, oh, James and Mason, why are you playing the Quantum of Solace game when you're talking about the movie Casino Renal? That's a great question because this game, uh, yes, it came out at the same time as... There's Eva Green. That's right. From as, Casino Royale. <laughs> that's right. But there's 15 levels in it. Uh-huh. Guess how many of them are from Quantum of Solace? Not all of them? Five. <laughs> a quick calculation in my head says most of that isn't from the movie Quantum of Solace. Correct. Huh. So as you can see, there's a number of levels here that are oh, from... Cl- the classic sinkhole level? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. Okay, so we're going to hey, do... there's Rainbow Road. <laughs> What the hell is this game? <laughs> so we're going to do the uh, the bit with the snake pit, the snake snake v mon- mongoose, which is then a. Oh, go- do, we, do we each take a roll of the snake <laughs> or the right. mongoose? We find it out, and then it, we go into the, uh, the 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 chase through the con- construction site. Oh, okay, very good. Okay, so we're going to kick it off there because this game, and you're going to see it a little bit now. Uh, after you're in the, the the we'll talk about it more next week when we talk about quantum. But when they find the water, mm-hmm. then they're both like, "Remember our backstories?" Well, this is it now. This is what's happening. Oh. And then she goes, "My backstory is this, this, and this." And then he goes, "Well, well my he- backstory is the movie Casino Royale." <laughs> exactly. Then he goes, "I'm going to play ten levels of Casino Royale. That's my backstory." <laughs> She's just set her rifle down. She's got her head in her hand. She's like. <laughs> Can't we stop the water? Let's stop the water thing. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's a good replica of his shirt. It's not from bad. Insane. That's a good. Oh, I thought you were going to say face. No, that's fine. I don't. I don't really notice faces. Yeah. Um, there's Carter, that absolute himbo I that was previously right. mentioned. My goodness, what a what a man. So this is actually Treyarch who worked on. Uh, Wait, it doesn't look anything like Carter. They didn't get his likeness rights. They don't get everybody. They no, got Daniel probably. Craig. They got Eva Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got Mads Mikkelsen again, like a couple of years after Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the idea is here that this is, as I mentioned, Treyarch, who did Spider-Man 2, and okay. they also did the Call of Duty series. And because they only had about nine months to work on this, and the Quantum of Solace script was just all over the place, sure. and they kept changing it because of the writer's strike, again, we'll talk about it next week, mm-hmm. they just went, we can't really do much of this, let's just make this a <laughs> Casino Royale game. Uh, there's actually an excellent video, and he does excellent videos in general, over at the Mini Me channel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so he covers a lot of like licensed titles such as this. And oh, you're just you're just pausing to kill these randos, you yeah, yeah. This bomber, what because are you doing? it's basically what they've done. They've gone, how can we make this as quick as we can? Mm-hmm. Let's make it a uh, cover based shooter. shooter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's not. Well, it's both. It's it's a cover based shooter. Oh, it is too. Mixed. Oh with, my god. It's mixed with. Um, it's first person, but when yeah. you, when you hit cover, you're in you're in third person. But okay. it's but it's also unpleasant to play. It is a bit. It, it's there's a it's a bit of a jarring disconnect, and you can also kind of tell which sections are supposed to be mm-hmm. which. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Anyway, so they went. The quickest way to get this out is if we just do Call of Duty. And yeah, right, right. Look, it's because they had the engine and they had exactly, the, yeah, right, and okay. all the mechanics are yeah. like mechanically very solid because it's mm. Call of Duty. Now you just copped a bullet then, but I did. fortunately you are James Bond and you can just hide behind yeah. a crate as usual. I think I like the idea of what they've done here, where you pull out and you see him, because mm. otherwise it just feels like Call of Duty. So yeah. every now and then it reminds you, it's like, oh, you're James Bond, don't forget. Well, no, what it could do 
is um, you could just be playing and you could be shooting and you'd be engaged in like a really difficult gunfight. And then he would just put his gun down and look at his uh, Amiga Seamaster <laughs> yeah. and he'd be like, hmm, a perfect watch for me, James Bond. This is, oh no, it is the 2008 version, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so look, it's, it's not great, okay. but when you consider what they did in nine months, yeah, the right. fact that they didn't have the script they didn't have any of the assets. But they, they did have a DVD copy of <laughs> Casino Royale. That's hand. right. Yeah. And so the quantum levels aren't very accurate. Like, they're very vague because they're like, we we were going off, like, leaks and stuff. We didn't really oh, no. know. But the Bond is like, we've got to stop Dominic Green from getting oil or diamonds or water or something. <laughs> we're not sure yet. <laughs> He'll tell us. Yeah. Uh, so they're just like, uh, you know, we're just we're working off leaks and whatever, uh -huh. and this is what they ended up doing. So Casino Royale levels very accurate. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much two a T. Yeah. Quantum of Soul is very vague. Mm. Uh, and so next week, I'm not sure whether we're going to come back for this for the quantum levels. Who's this guy? Uh, that's out with the you. guy. That's the himbo. Oh, it's Carter's hanging yeah. out with you. He didn't die. <laughs> he didn't oh, get wow. killed by that mongoose. <laughs> wow. they, didn't, they didn't team up on him. Again, not great. Yeah. Don't right. buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't anyway unless you want a physical copy. Ugh. But. Uh, Pretty impressive considering the turnaround. Mm, yeah. Again, it's it's Call of Duty. If you like Call of Duty, but none of the online works, <laughs> and it's been <laughs> stripped of all its all its features and multiplayer, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hello. And you want to, you know, you. Oh like, no! I got. Uh, and you like the, and you like the game Call of Duty. Yeah. But you want to know like the explicit sexual history of the character <laughs> you're playing. You pl get this. I this think. is where it's at. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's gotta defend that shack. I gotta get it. It's not even very long. I'll be out of here in a minute. Uh -huh. Don't even know about it, mate. Okay, then Olga Kurlyenko. Then I was in a big shack. Yeah. And I had a really big gun, like an even bigger gun than I've got now. And, and I was I, shooting. And, and I, was every, like, I, was, I was shooting everybody. I was having a great time. <laughs> I was like, put your, put your, put your hand down from your ear. Because yeah. I was like, because I'm a spy. I'm a better spy than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, well, fun, <laughs> funny, 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 fun fact. You actually don't need to put your hand up to your ear nah. to listen to that's that wireless that technology. That's wireless yeah, technology. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was 2006. Mm, that's right. There was still wireless technology at that point. Yeah. Right, here we go. Oh, did you see the bulldozer, Mason? Yep. So the other thing is, there's <laughs> no driving levels. Like, there's no, like, there's a little bit of stealth. Okay. Uh, the frame rate is not great, as you'll soon say. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're probably seeing it right now. I'm going to die, James. Yeah, look at that frame rate. Very... <laughs> very, <laughs> very stiff, very janky. But no, there's no, no driving levels. There's no like, there's no extra bond stuff that you'd expect. James, it's me, Carter. You should get on the big digging machine. Look at me killing this man. Nah, nice. he got away though. Ah, had that bomb in his backpack. I shot yeah, it. Yeah, you got him good. Nice, exploded. Mm. Yeah. So now we are uh, we sit through a cutscene where. M tells you or whatever, gives you an update. Okay. So she's like, and anyway, you got to chase him through or whatever, whatever. I'm like an MI6s. They've they've got an accurate kind of MI6 they operating really system. Nailed that's, it. that's quite accurate. Yeah. Sure. Again, the things that they could get a hold of, mm -hmm. they they really did, and it's kind of a shame that this team didn't get a chance to then go on and do something else. Uh, with the bomb license, a lot of the people working on this. This bomb maker is a real malarkey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, remember I said there was no driving missions? Yes. I'm not controlling this. Ah, uh, okay. So it's just like I'm stuck in this this thing. Mm. But you're gonna you're gonna see some one to one action. That well, you what, I mean, they wouldn't risk that. I mean, if they give nah. you control of a bulldozer, you just you just drive it off into the sea. Probably. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> drive it down to the mall. Yeah, it's what I do in real life. Just wreck some yeah. cars in the car park. But a lot of the people who worked on this have gone on to be like higher ups at Treyarch. Now you're playing again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is, do the sand, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can see a lot of bits like that. This is a bit Mirror's Edge. You've got to do some parkour yeah, in first Yeah, if you person. like parkour, but like not as... <laughs> you're good as Mirror's Edge. Yeah, there's not as clean a jobs. Okay. And this is pretty accurate. He was going up the thing. Yeah, I know. Thing. I mean, again, because they've had the opportunity to be like, what happened in the movie? We'll yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But there's, you know, the, again, the quantum stuff is like, I guess we'll put it in the exploding hotel. That was, mm. is that a thing in this movie, we think? <laughs> right. Yeah. It was actually, there was a- Is the hotel explode or is oh. it a shrink? What's, gonna, what happens in this movie? We don't this. know watch yet. Watch this, watch this. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was supposed to be a Casino Royale game, but there was a changeover between, I think it was EA and Activision. Because okay. EA did all the previous ones when mm. we did the Brosnan movies. Yes. Uh, all of those games we looked at, I think they were all EA. And oh, maybe not the first one. No, uh, Golden Eyes. And, and so they didn't have. They, they got the license in like 2005 or something uh -huh. like that. And then had. They were like, make a Casino Royale game. They're like, we can't because, <laughs> you know, that movie's coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they started it. They never got there. I think it was supposed to be a third person shooter. Uh -huh. And then, you know, they technically had three years to make this. 
But because of the rider strike and things we will talk yeah, about yeah. next week, they didn't really get any of that time at all. Yeah, just well, look, look at that, though. That's, that's pretty good. not bad. Imagine if they'd rushed this out just immediately prior to Casino Round. Oh like, wouldn't look at any, anywhere near as good. But that is, though, a, it, it was a completely different game. Like, none of this was yeah, from... Right. This was all built specifically for this yeah. quantum game. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to go for it. I can do it. I'm James Bond. This is just like the movie. Remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, oh, I'm okay. Look at me go. Look at this guy go. He's got it all, doesn't he? Did you consider that for any of these videos? Maybe some James Bond stunts? Drive a bulldozer into a building? That's a good point, actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't know any Drink bulldozers. a can of oil. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. You don't get to run in and do the uh, shoot the bomb maker in oh. the embassy. That absolute lunacy. So here's the thing for next week, and I, I'd love to get people's opinions. We could do a quantum level from this, uh -huh. or there is a PlayStation 2 Quantum of Solace third-person cover-based shooter. Right. There's also some um, like 3DS stuff, but I'm not. Okay. We're not going down that road. Which or whatever. one is worse and will make us hate ourselves? Well, we've seen this, That's so true. should we do something new? Anyway, we'll leave it up to people below in the comments. Yeah. What a wonderful experience, though. <laughs> uh, again, if you can get get a hold of this game, don't. All right then. Just get a slightly better game. No shade to the people who made this because, quite frankly, it's exceptional. Looks the, the fact part, that they certainly. did this at all, mm -hmm. phenomenal. Well done. Oh, we're, yeah, okay, sure. We're applauding. And well done to me for playing through this entire game. <laughs> I didn't really like it. All right. <laughs> All right, should we get out of the Matrix or whatever we're doing? Yeah, let's get right out of the Matrix. <laughs> Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. You're not going to believe how many times we do this a week. Once. Once, that's right, if you can believe that. But they actually go up early at bigsandwich.co along with the extended audio edition. Mm. Uh, we also have bonus podcasts. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that comes out a day early. Mm -hmm. Early videos, movie commentaries, a bunch of other stuff. What do you think of this movie? Is it the best James Bond film ever? Mm. Yes. I mean, a lot of people would say it's one of the later Daniel Craig uh, Bonds. A lot of people like Skyfall a lot. I like Skyfall. Not many people like uh, Spectre. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Leave us alone. Please. Oh, yeah, no, great. I was going to, yep. We'll block you. <laughs> yep. Don't talk to we'll us We'll preemptively block you. We'll, we'll see nah, you coming. Nah, we'll you're block right. you. Goodbye. Bye. Grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you next week.